Hello there, welcome to another week in the garden. It's the 10th of March today, so we need to get busy getting some seed in. We've got the gardens now ready. Now we need to get the plants ready and get them in. So I'm going to put one or two bits in today, some cauliflower, some cabbage, some leeks, all from seed. I'll show you what we can do in a moment and get those underway. And then we've also, for the flower bed, We've got to get the geraniums that we've overwintered potted up and the rest of the fuchsias potted up and also the plant, the cuttings that we took last year that have overwintered outside and now growing well. I need to clean and feed those and prune them back and get those ready for the growing season. Okay, so we'll start with the seed. We're just putting four in today. Now the lettuce little jam, I'm going to put a few in and grow them in the greenhouse to get them up quick. All these will stay in the greenhouse, they'll all germinate quite freely in here. No problem at all with these. But we'll tray them, get them in, put a cover on and we'll keep them moist for a few days and they'll soon germinate. I'm just going to put the cabbage sherwood. This is summer cabbage. Very good for coleslaws, etc. I'm not going to put a lot in. I think I want about 15 plants eventually. So we'll put half in and then it's no good putting too many. In. Plenty in there for me. So we'll just top that up. Half an inch for cabbages. They will want watering when I've finished because this compost is a bit on the dry side. My old faithful piece of wood. And a label saying what they are and the date goes in. And um, we'll do the next one. This is cauliflower fairway hybrid, so there won't be many of these in there. So again, don't want cracks in that, I'll still fall down the cracks and never see them again. We'll put all these in, there's only maybe 30 seed in it, so but these will fair away is one of the cauliflowers that does freeze very well if you want to grow it. And it will be a summer cauliflower, so it's you can freeze it when there's not a lot about yet more time. But that's it, that's all you get of that one. Half an inch again. We'll put that on the table and use it again. So just smudge it down, not too tight and far too much in there. Not. There you are. I have sieved this uh, compost before I used it. It is John and In's seed and potting, so we'll be able to. It's a nice compost. Right, let's uh, start the next one. These are leeks. Might be a bit early for some people with leeks, but what I will do, I'm going to have an early set and a later set to take me through, so I don't need an awful lot of leeks. These are black seeds, so we'll try and keep our eye on what we're doing. Let's say, do it twice, I think. Come on. They will come, there they come. I only want to put like one row across the garden and then another row of lates, later ones. So there's nothing there for the later set. Right, we'll just top that up half an inch again for lates. Not put so much on this time, we're not taking it off then. Again, just Gently pat it and then take it across like that. Label and stack. Right, what else have we got left here? This is the little gem, the lettuce little gem. Again, I'm going to be setting these right through the summer. And the first batches I'm going to grow in this greenhouse. So I don't want a lot. 
if you think you only need three, maybe four lettuce a week, so you don't need a lot of them. When they get down here, they come. Plenty there, look, plenty, plenty, plenty. Again, half an inch. But it was easy because I put the compost in the trays at half inch deep, so I know if I top the tray up, they are about half inch. And these will stay in here. I should put covers on them. Need a label. We'll just stack them up there for a moment. Another thing I'm going to pop in are some busy lizards in patients. Now I got this at Wilco for a pound, so I thought I'd put them in and try. I usually just buy the young plants, but we'll try it this way. They grow quite easily, but these to germinate them I will take them in the house because they need a little bit more heat than these vegetable plants. Okay, so let's get them in. Busy Liz is a pound from Wilco. <laughs> We've got a few. Let's see how we go with putting them in. Now, these are one of the seeds that you just scatter on the surface. You can put, um, take that out, don't want that. Just scatter them on the surface and we'll germinate them on the surface. You could put some vermiculite or something on top, I won't, I'll just do it like this. As you can see, there's quite a few seeds for your pound and we'll see what we get. Not so many at all, but I'll just thin those out a little bit there. That's fine. We'll put a label on them. Busy Lizzie's. Impatient, proper name. I'll tell you one day why they call it Impatient. Now, I'm not going to cover them, but what I will, when I've put them into um, the tray, with the cover on top, I just put a bit of newspaper on top of that to stop the, too much light getting on them. They'll germinate quite happily. Uh, if you remember, in the autumn, we overwintered the geraniums and the fuchsias in that very sandy open compost. We've done some of the fuchsias, as you can see. A few of the cuttings that we've overwintered and potted up but we really do need to get these geraniums done now, now that they're moving. These are the geraniums that we overwintered and we used any old pot that we could get our hands on. There's quite a few in there, so I'm going to turn them out and get some repotted into there, okay? So let's see if we can get some out. It won't take much lifting, as you can see. We're still looking for any vine weevil that have managed to get past me, but there's nothing on that one. It's just show a little bit of white root, so that's that'll be fine. As you can see, the compost that they've been in, there's absolutely nothing in it at all. But again, a little bit of white root, so they're starting to wake up. So we'll get them potted. All these we'll cut off later. Don't cut them off now because it might rot back a bit. So let's do four, shall we? There's nothing there, a lot again. Nice clean roots. Quite happy with that. As you can see, there's nothing in that compost at all for them. They're just sat. Nice new growth coming here, not. So let's take one more. Let's have this one. There's actually two there that would take one. So if you if you remember that if we tried to start these from seed this year they'd hardly be moving at all but now we're going to have a really good strong plant. So let's clear the table and we'll do a bit of potting. Now if these are second hand pots. Remember if you're using second hand pots do give them a wash because there'll be seed Weed seed tend to get round the top and then you start germinating them. 
compost is peat free what I've actually done I've added a little bit of Vitax Q4 to it just to give it a little bit more strength because there's not a lot in your potting compost these days I want to take that away we don't need that gritty stuff with this I've actually brought the the compost up in the Ferrari today because it's nice and clean it'll be the compost barrow for a short while and then when it gets dirty it will be the muck barrow so there you are look quite a spot all four and then we'll let me show you how we're doing very good those I'm very very pleased with those there's a lot of a lot of plant there to really get going I'll leave them in the greenhouse now not going anywhere special I will water everything when we're finished in here today I don't but I just watered them with water that's been left in here so it's the same temperature with the fine rows obviously you don't want heavy rows onto these while I'm just potting these if you just have a look at the tomato seeds and the pepper seeds I was going to pot them this week but I think I'll hold them for another another week because I need a fourth leaf on them there's the fourth one going in now remember these these dead bits leave them alone don't take them yet We'll take them off when we're really starting to, to get some good growth on. When they came out of the shed, there was all a, a yellowy colour uh, color on the leaf, which is now turned to green since they've been in here about a fortnight now, two weeks. They've all come back to life. And if I just move them, I don't want that compost there. You see. But there you are. You can see what uh, what's going to happen as I take them out. Look at that, look beautiful. All new roots growing. And they've had nothing. The only time I've watered them was in the last the last few days, ready for potting. Uh, I think I watered them once right through the winter. So that's how to get your geraniums through. And your fuchsias, as these plants are starting to grow, you really need to get them potted up, so I should do this today. The other thing I'll just show you quickly. Now these are the lavender cuttings we took last year. I don't know if those that can remember. We've overwintered them just at the side of the house. Uh, the only water they've had is what's, what's rained on them, basically. They've come on quite well. It's the blue lavender. The roots are turning white, so I'm not I'm not actually going to pop these on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to top dress it with a bit of Vitax Q4 and then just fill the compost up where it's washed down. Okay, so this is me this is my Vitax Q4 in my bottle and I've made some holes in the top. This is the best way to put it on. And I'm just going to put a sprinkling round. You see? like that about half a teaspoon if you need to to know and then I'm just going to top it up with some some of this compost just firm it down and tidy it round as and when that will be a nice plant these will be some of the ones we'll be sending up to the the village fate. This is the hardy fuchsia again it's a cutting we taken end of the summer it's grown up well it's actually sat outside with the lavender at the side of the house you can see how well the, the weather's picking up it's beginning to flower a little bit you just have a look at its root make sure it's fine yeah, that's all right. Look, showing new roots. A bit dry, but that's no problem. We'll soon water it. So these are straight off the run, so I could show you what... what uh, it looks like it's going to be hard if you see us. It wouldn't have got this far through the winter. The pot's a bit dirty then. 
So we'll do the same, we'll do a bit of top dress. I'll just move the foliage out of the way. About half a teaspoonful Vitax Q4. There you are, and then I'll just top dress that. So we'll have to clean that pot a bit now. Uh, that'll be another one. There's quite a few at the side of the house to be potted and cleaned. So we'll sort those out as we go. That, if you can imagine, in a month or so, it'll be a big plant covered in flower. It'll be quite nice. We will, if it does flower, we will put a name to it, I think. Same again. Let's move that that way. Choice Tenata. This is a rooted cutting, you see, it's just beginning to root down now. Been left outside, it's perfectly alright. Choicea tonata sundance, the yellow form. Mexican orange blossom is the common name of it. Again, a little bit of vitax just to wake it up a bit. You can tell it's one of the cuttings. Can you see where we reduce the leaves? When we took the cutting we reduced the leaves a lot so it wouldn't and it's grown quite well so we're quite happy there's quite a few of those to do actually but it's just while we're passing we'll, i'll show you what i'll be doing over the weekend and then right so that's those done another little job that we ought to be getting on with is uh, these fuchsias i've brought two in to show you now these are the overwintered outdoor fuchsias these are the cuttings we took last year end of summer they've grown up we've overwintered them at the side of the house and you'll see that they've started to grow from the base again so we'll do exactly the same as what we did with the other ones i'll show you as you can see there's plenty of growth down here there's growth up the stem but what I think we'll do, we'll take it all off at the bottom, give it a, a top dressing of Vitax, top the pot up and let it grow on again. That's a bush fuchsia. This is a trailing fuchsia. So it's the same thing, there's plenty of life in the plant. But we're going to take it off here and grow it out again because it'll have a good root system. It just shows how how far we are into the spring that they're all shooting so let's take this off look we we'll just take it back to there we'll take it to that one uh, so that's it's a it just says bush on there because i don't know the names of some of these now a little bit of top dressing about half a teaspoonful and then just top it up with a bit of compost and that will wash down when it's washed these will go straight back outside we don't need to keep them in so that's the bush one done we'll do this trailer as well as you can see it's no good keeping all this on now it's done rather well to get this far but we've got a nice new shoot there so let's take that off and we we'll have to take this one right back up to there. Same again, just press down, it's well rooted. A little bit, that's fine. Just top dress it off and just first sit down. And then when they're watered, that Vitax will filter down and feed the plant and it'll come up beautiful then. But they'll go back outside, all those, what we've just done can go outside, those five. We only brought them in to show you and then we'll take them straight back out. The other thing we need to do is to pot on the mint. I shall take it out of the pot, probably cut it in half and repot it. Right, so here it is. Here's the mint, it's spent the winter outside. It's beginning to shoot now, so I would assume with all that there's a lot of root on it. We'll leave the top on for a moment because we'll use that 
to pull it out the pot but we will actually cut all this back when we've repotted it but it'd be easier to get hold of let's see if we can get it out there you are smells beautiful as you can see it's a good example of the roots going round and round that really is pot bound it's doing rather well and it smells absolutely beautiful what we'll do is uh, we'll pop it into this big pot there's an earwig there, look I don't like earwigs in the greenhouse, so throw him out. Um, we'll pot, cut it in half and pot it into a big pot. So we're using a peat free compost. I've put plenty of crocs in the bottom because I don't want it to get waterlogged in here. We'll just spread that to the sides. The other thing we're going to put in is some blood fish and bone pellets. This will help feed it. It doesn't want a lot of feed, but at least it'll keep going then through the season. Just mix those in. And be careful, I don't lift the crocs on the bottom. There's quite a few big crocs down there. Bring it out again. Right. If we just potted it up like that, it'll just only have a little bit to grow out but if we cut it in half then the whole plants to will revigorate and start growing again so that's what we're going to do so sharp knife and um, we'll cut completely in half look the crocs are still in here from last year i'll get those out in a moment get in there and cut it Careful with your fingers. And then part that up. As you can see, there's last year's crocs all grown into it. Even the roots smell nice. And now we could cut it into four if we wish and have four pots, but we use quite a bit of mint. We do have a little bit down the garden growing. I'll just cut that off, we don't need that. And then we're just going to use this much of a muchness which one you use. We'll use this one. So now I should trim the top. Secateurs, sharp secateurs. A bit, it's a bit woody so it's best to use secateurs. It doesn't matter if you take the tops off one or two of the mint as well, as you know it soon grows up. I'll take that one off. There you go. So there's the new mint going in. I, if I put it all in, as you can imagine, there's not much growing room if it was like that. So we'll put one in, put it well down, push it well round. There you go. Now that will really take off. I'm using peat-free compost. Uh, it looks... The peat-free compost seems to have an awful lot of woody bits in it. Now, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, we'll see. But we'll just take it to there and then we'll top dress again look because we want some want some good mint out of it just scuff that round and we'll just top it up stop one topping it up right we'll top it up nicely don't worry about the mint it'll be fine push that nice and tight because it's a very very hungry plant it will soon root out into all this nice and firm a little bit more on those edges and this will go straight outside again it's spent the winter out so it can stay out a little bit over the top There you are, a nice pot full of mint. 
In a few weeks, Diane will be able to come and take some off to put on the new potatoes. That'll be fine. That'll go outside. Uh, the, the one that's left, uh, I've been informed that my daughter would want it now, so we'll do exactly the same, and then we'll take it up to her house. It's one of the few plants we won't have to put a label in because they think we'll know what that is when it comes up. A good watering. Leave outside and it'll be up in no time and then we've got two really good pots of some nice mint. We selected this mint over the years because it's the, the better, what we think is a better tasting one so, and it smells gorgeous. I'll just show you the broad beans that are all coming up nicely. Here you are, there's the broad beans. I was thinking they weren't all germinating but they're fine look this they're all coming up still in the greenhouse as soon as they get say another inch or so on that they'll go outside and harden up so they can go straight down the garden we don't need a lot but there's a good row across the garden there that'll be fine so we'll leave those up there the onions if we could, if you can remember we potted these up last week they're standing very nice now they're still growing, that's what we need, is keep them growing, and they're doing fine. So I'll just clean up, and then we'll go and do some pruning. Hello there, we're down at the shed, um, where the grapevine is, and um, we're going to prune it today. Now, normally it would be another two, three weeks before I prune it, but the good weather has brought the buds on that much that I'm going to have to prune it today. This is an established vine. Now, if you're growing a vine from new, you'll be training the cross pieces in. So you you do your pruning to keep building the framework. As you can see, I've built a good framework with this one. And now I just need to prune all the offshoots. As you can see, it's a well-established vine. So I'm actually going to prune all these spurs back to two buds. There'll be one bud that will carry the fruit and one bud just in case. So that's the insurance and that's the fruit, okay? All right, so we'll start in this area here and then we'll work slowly through all the vine then I'll show you the whole vine finished, okay? Two buds. I don't know if you can see, there's the wood coming up, so we won't count that one. One bud, two buds, and very sharp secateurs take off. So we'll do this one now. There's last year's spur there, so we'll follow it up. So we say one bud, two bud, and then very sharp secateurs and cut there, okay? Here again, one, two, and so we'll cut off just there. Okay, so I'll work my way across. I'll just do this one. One, two, and we'll take that there. Slanting cut if you can, you can't always. One, two, cut. One, two, cut. The vines are showing a little bit of green inside, so it's a good job of doing it now. One, two, so we'll leave that one. One, two, we've we'll just nip that top off there that one's fine look it's got one two on this one's fine one two just take that bit off that was broken anyway here we are look one two so just nip that off a little bit delicate work but you soon once you get your eye in one two leave that one so we take that off there i shall carry on like this for the whole of the vine and then I'll show you it done, okay? Right, that's the grapevine prune. That's nicely pruned. Remember it's an established vine, so it just needs all the, the sides the side spruts trimming back to two. One to bear the fruit and one just in case. And 
that's it we'll prune it back a, a, prune it back a little bit in the summer when we get some excess foliage growing on it it's showing a little bit of green with the good weather but not a lot of sap running at the moment so, right, so that's the grapevine finished all nicely trimmed back all nicely on two shoots remember take the, any dead wood that you see off uh, you'll probably find that the dead wood will probably fall off anyway any dead shoots will fall back um, the right, looking forward to some some nice grapes for the wine next year the the wine from last year we'll be bottling it next month so that should be nice on the long summer days when we can have a nice drink of wine with the dinners. That's the grapevine complete so I think we'll nip down the garden and I'll just show you the two raised beds I've made so I can grow some carrots and parsnips. <laughs> okay? Well, here we are down at Mid Garden. The, uh, these are the two frames we've made for the carrots and parsnips. It's just mesh and I've put a Haspen staple fastener on these so I've got that one still to do, just hold the lids down. Nothing exacting about them, I just made them and I've screwed them down to the space so it doesn't blow away. In two years time we can lift the whole frames and move them down the garden. What's in compost is left in here then can be dug into this piece of garden so they although they look quite substantial they're actually mobile frames and we'll be able to move them up and down with the crop rotation they still need some more compost inside I think I'm going to use John Innan's potting I know it's going to be a little bit more expensive but we look at the um, the compost we're getting generally now, the peat free I'm beginning to think there's too much woody bits in it so I'm going for John Innings potting so I can finish the frames off people have asked me if these will be no dig frames well no they're not these are just built up with some light compost inside away from these clay beds so I can grow carrots and parsley now no, be, no dig beds are a different thing altogether if you want to really do no dig beds which I will be doing when I can't dig no more I recommend that you go on to Mike Herdy's site Mike Herdy is, is well worth everybody to have a visit especially if you're interested in no dig right is a good gardener and well worth a visit and um, we'll put his details on the drop down okay I sweep the mess up that we made from trimming the vine and I think that'll be about it for this week now hope you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now